All right. Uh, hey, Shalom, Shalom. Kwame Ashal, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do unto Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash, and the blondest of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS that, that uh, rule well and that uh, have taught me this truth. To you, I say Shalom and Shalom to the hopeful elect. So uh, I think I might title this lesson As a Dog Returns to His Vomit, So a Fool Repeats His Folly. <laughs> And um, the inspiration for this video comes from Elder Apostle Arimlob and Elder Apostle Gabar's uh, videos that they have done recently. And uh, those videos go into how pretty much you're marked for death when you leave this truth. If you leave this truth, you're pretty much marked for death, man. And um, they brought out uh, the situation that uh, happened in uh, Trinidad, former member of GMS Trinidad, he left the truth to pursue a career in singing, and it came to our attention that uh, former brother ended up getting shot at a party, and he ended up losing his life. So uh, that's what happens. Uh, when you uh, leave this truth, there's no hedge around you anymore. And you're pretty much left out in the open. So it's any day, any minute, any second now that uh, you could be caught up. So um, you're pretty much marked for death. And a lot of you, there's a lot of individuals, man, who left this truth, left this thing of ours. They're still walking around living. But a lot of you are marked for, for nuclear destruction. A lot of you are marked for Jacob's trouble. A lot of you are going to get caught up out there. Any day now. Any second now. <laughs> the Lord has the green light on you. So you got to be careful. Now I'm going to start off at um, 2 Peter chapter 2, um, verse 21 here. And it says here, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So it would be better for you to have not come into this truth and for you to just stay in the world. Here it is, when you come into this truth, you're already cursed. You're already cursed and you're awakened to it because now you know that uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 15 verses, 15 verse on down is on your ass. Now you know that you're cursed. But you get a double curse when you leave this truth. When you forsake Yahweh Bashem Yoshai and you take your hand off the plow. So now you're double cursed. Because here it is, you, you, you came into the truth, you learned the way of righteousness, and then you returned to your wickedness by, by leaving this truth. Right? So now you're cursed. Now you got to pay double. Right? So you're cursed. So, so it, would have, it would have just been better for you to have stayed in the world and, and continue on in your wickedness than come into this truth, man. And you have, uh, you have insulted Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. And he doesn't take too kindly to that, man. You've insulted the Lord and His Son. And you've insulted Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Uh, because it took a, a serious sacrifice. It took the Lord dying on the cross to get you into this truth. So anyways, verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire, right? So, hey, pretty much it means that fools are stubbornly inflexible. And this, hey, this guy is a, is a, is a repulsive simile of the dog that eats its own vomit again, right? You know, a dog that eats its own vomit again is like you people that go back into the world. You leave this truth and go back into the world. And you know you're not supposed to eat vomit because vomit is poisonous. So here it is. You came into this truth. You got cleaned up. And then now you're going back into the world. You're going back into to, to poison. <laughs> you're going to go back and eat that poison because there's nothing in the world for you. And it just shows that this guy, he went to go uh, pursue a career in singing. 
or rapping or whatever the hell it was. And he was around some worldly people that were wicked, that were in that industry probably, that probably knew about him. They probably got jealous and guess what? They shot his ass. That's poison, man. That's poison. That's how the people of the world are. That's how the world is. It's poison. Right? It's poison. Also, that's what a pig does too. A pig eats its own filth. It eats its own vomit. It's a scavenger. That's what dogs and pigs are. And they're actually unclean. Right? They're actually unclean animals. And they were commonly known as scavengers of the dead. And when you read about them in the Bible, they are very repugnant creatures, man. And they sometimes symbolize evil. <laughs> right? So, so, hey, what that individual did was very evil. And um, he's likened onto a pig and a dog. And that's, that's you individuals that come into this truth and you follow the truth. You're like a dog and a pig. Right? You're like a dog and a pig. And also, vomit also... Uh, represents excessive indulgence and it also symbolizes revulsion right revulsion let's look at the word revulsion okay so as a medical term for counter irritation as a healing technique uh, a tearing off act of pulling away uh, to tear, pull, see, act of drawing back or away, the sudden, the meaning sudden or violent change of feeling, especially sudden reaction of disgust. <laughs> All right, so you get the point, man. Yeah, that's what it is, man. That's what that vomit is. Blah! That's why you vomit like that. <laughs> oh, man. And then you go back and you eat that vomit. You put that poison in your system. Damn. Hey. It's a serious thing, man. That's serious. So let's go back to... Uh, let's go into Hebrews chapter 6. And we're going to start at uh, 4. So it says here... Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened... Uh-oh. Once enlightened. Because that's what happens when you come to the shoes. You get enlightened. You get enlightened. You get illuminated. It's the same thing. Enlightenment. Enlightened. It means to be illuminated. You get the light. Because I believe uh, the law is the light. Let me see if I can pull that up. Let's see if I can pull. I'll pull up my other Bible here. Uh, the law is the light. Let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, oh, I spelled that wrong. Um, it's probably in Proverbs. Oh, here we go. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are they, are the way of light. Salaki, are the way of light. Mm -hmm. And I'll get Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's right. So if you're not uh, coming out of this... Uh, Bible, you're not going into the words, you're not quoting the scriptures, you're not rehearsing the righteous acts, pretty much there's no light in you. So if you're doing those things, that means you have the light, you have the knowledge, you have the understanding. So yeah, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. So there you go. And that represents the truth. You know, when you have this truth, it's a light. So you know what that means? You're illuminated. Now you can see things. Much more clearly. And also the angels are going to be working with you. The Holy Spirit's going to be on you. To break things down. So you can get dreams and visions. Right? So you can see into the future. You can break down the prophecies. You can say things before it happens. So this truth is a light man. And um, you're illuminated when you come into this truth. So... And have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Do you hear that? Made partakers of the Holy Ghost. That's right. So the Spirit was on you to go out into the highways week in, week out, to do these lessons, to do these sit-downs. There's an energy behind that. 
to call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yashai, probably to heal and to bring forth miracles, to teach people. It means you're a partaker of the Holy Ghost, right? Also, like I said earlier, get, getting dreams and visions. Right, so it says, verse 5, And have tasted the good word of the Most High. Yeah? And the word does taste good. As the scripture says, uh, the word is like honey. I believe going into, uh, what is it? Um, I think it's uh, the book of John. John chapter 9. I, I forgot. Uh, I think it's John 9. Hold on. No, John 10. Uh, the good word, right? Um, uh, I can't remember if it's John. I can't remember. But I know that uh, it was very sweet. Let me just search it. Sweet. Belly. Yeah, no, Revelation 10. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, Revelation 10 and 9. I, I just forgot. So this is Revelation chapter 10 and 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. That's right. So this truth is very bitter and it's also sweet. You know, it's bitter in, in a sense because now when you come into this truth, you're going to catch hell. Now you see things for what it really is. You see the very, you see the bitter truth. And uh, the truth is not easy to handle for most individuals. And that's another reason why individuals fall out because it's too much for them. Your eyes are wide open. You can see clearly now <laughs> that pretty much uh, everything is a lie. E easy E is a devil. There's a, there's a secret council that is controlling things behind the scenes. There's a lot of deceivers out here. You see things for what it is. You, you realize that um, your nation, Yasha Allah, Jake, right, or whatever you want to call them, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and all the other tribes, right? A lot of them ain't going to make it. And that, that that's very bitter. You know, a lot of your people ain't going to make it. A lot of our people ain't going to make it. So it's sweet because um, now, you, now you know your nationality. You know the name of the Lord. You know that there's hope. You know that there's, a, there's greater things to come. So, yeah. Uh, verse 10, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. That's right. So it's sweet in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I'm an Israelite. I come into this truth. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yoshai. There's a brotherhood. You have support. All right. You have support. You, you get uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. But then it's bitter. Now you got to go through that fiery trial. <laughs> now you're now you're afflicted for righteousness sake and that's not nice right and that's not nice so anyways i'm done with that uh, let's go back to uh hebrews 6 let's go back to hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5 and i've tasted the good word of the most high and the powers of the world to come powers and who's that major power that's going to come. It's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. I'm going to come back. You're going to take this kingdom down. Verse 6. If they shall fall away, which means fall out the truth, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of the Most High afresh and put him to an open shame. So if you fall out, you know what it would, it would take you, Yahweh Shai, going back on the cross and dying again to get you back into the truth. And guess what, guys? Yahweh Shai, he ain't going to come back and do that again for you. He ain't going to come back and relive that experience, that excruciating experience, man. You know, him going, him being crucified, that was, that was, wow, that was the worst, right? But also him coming back and going through all those, those skirmishes, those spiritual skirmishes with our people and these other nations, man. Fighting our people, bickering back and forth with them. Going through all that bullshit. He ain't going to do that again for you, man. So once you're in this truth, you got to stay in this truth. 
There's no excuse. So it's pretty much impossible for you to come back into this truth when you've fallen out. And that's why you're marked for death. And that's why uh, that's why that, that individual got shot like that. You got a humiliating death. And that's what, that's what you people are going to get. You're going to get a humiliating death. Now that former brother, he's in the spirit world right now. So he's, a, he's at peace. But how it's going to play out in the realm of, of men, in this realm, it's embarrassing. You get, a, you get a bad, embarrassing death. That's the way you're going to go out. Even though that brother right now, his spirit returned unto the Lord and he's at, he's at peace, he's at rest. How it plays out here, when you're in hell, you're going to get a very miserable death. You're going to get an embarrassing death. And it ain't going to be nice and it ain't going to be pretty. So, uh, yeah. So it says here, seeing they crucified to themselves the son of the Most High afresh and put him to an open shame. The Lord ain't going to embarrass himself again and die on the cross. Hell no. So, yeah, that's all that I want from here. Uh, let's get uh, Luke chapter 9 and 62. Uh-oh. And Yahweh I said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. Oh my gosh, that's heavy right there. Oh my gosh. No man having put his hand to the plow. That's right. Coming into this truth and putting in work. Because when you come into this truth, you're going to work. You're going to be in that field, which is out in the world, which really means out into the highways and the byways, you know, doing these lessons. You're going to be plowing away, which is really teaching this truth, doing, uh, doing, doing uh, righteous works. And looking back, that's right. So while you're doing this truth, you're looking back. Like, oh man, I wish I could go back into the world. Oh, I wish, you know, I, I miss I miss what I was doing back in the world. I miss being a rapper. Because you have a lot of people who are who are ex-rappers, man. I know, I'm thinking about an individual that, that I'm doing the work with right now. You know, his attitude isn't too good. And he was in the world. He was rapping. And I can, I can tell, man, he, he hasn't fully put away that old spirit. By the way, that, that brother's acting. I had a dream about him, too. He wasn't doing nice things. He was going to the club. He wasn't doing nice things. So you have individuals that, that are like that. You know, they're still looking back. They're, put, they're working, but they're, they're looking back. You know, I want to go back into the world and do what I was doing. I want to rap. Man, fuck rapping, man. Man, fuck rapping. Fuck what you did in the world. Fuck what you did in the world. The Lord doesn't care about those things, man. Lord, don't care about those things. Fuck what you did in the world. I'm going to say it just like that. I'm going to be very vulgar. Very vulgar. Fuck what you did in the world. Those things don't score for points with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So no, having, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. That's right. You ain't fit for the kingdom. The Lord, the Lord ain't looking for entertainers. He's looking for rulers, he's looking for judges, he's looking for kings, he's looking for priests and righteous men. And you can't do those you can't be those things if you're caught up into the into entertainment, man. You can't. Or being caught up into the world, or doing whatever the hell you're doing. Anyways, let's move on. Let's get uh Luke chapter two. Verse uh, 48. Because when Yahweh when Yahweh was of age, right away he went to pursue the Lord's business, his father's business. And he made that very clear. So when you come into this truth, you're about doing the Lord's business. Nothing else matters. Nothing. Nothing else matters. Everything else comes second. This comes first. It's about the Lord's business. So, this is Luke chapter 2, verse 48. I'm going to start at 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, 
How is it that ye sought me? List ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Ha <laughs> And that's a majority of these people. You know, when you tell them you going out on the highways and byways, you're pursuing uh, that righteous lifestyle. And this is what you do. You just tell them that. You're basically telling this, I'm, I'm about my father's business. They don't understand that. They don't understand that saying. They look at you strange. And guess what? Your own parents are going to look at you strange. Your friends that you grew up with, with you, they're going to look at you strange. People you grew up with, they're going to look at you strange when you say things like that. I'm about my father's business, which, which really just means, you know, I'm about this truth. That's my first priority. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. It just means he's dedicated to serving his father and doing the work. So I don't really care about your feelings. <laughs> I'm about my father's business first. All right. So, yeah. So you have to be about the Lord's business, not going back into the world, pursuing a, a career in singing or rapping. Whatever the fuck you did, man. And I'm going to just say this. Where did singing and rapping get our people? Look at black culture today, man. Look at so-called is modern Israelite culture today. Starting with black culture because Judah, you know, he's the head tribe. So he's the trendsetter because that's where it starts with. Hip hop and rap and all that bit, all that bullshit. R&B. Where did that get you people, man? Where did that get you people? Come on, man. Come on, man. Here it is, the year 2023, and you have Jake saying, hey, you, you, you have Jake in the year 2023 uh, vanguarding and gatekeeping hip-hop and R&B and soul music, telling the other nations, hey, we've given you rock. We've given you R&B. You guys gatekeep the most stupidest shit. These other nations are gatekeeping banking and finances. What the hell are you gatekeeping? Where the hell did that shit get you? You stupid Jakes, man. You stupid tribes, man. Stupid. So stupid. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. And the point will be made in the 39th verse. Vanguard and gatekeeping the most stupidest shit, man. Oh, Jake. We gave you rock. We gave you R&B. Who cares? You're not ruling anything. Good God. Stupid. So this is Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. And it says here, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And, you know, these things, your, your loved ones can get you to fall out the truth and to forsake the Lord. And if that happens, that means you're just not worthy. You're not worthy of the Lord's protection. You're not worthy of the Lord's love. Right? You're not worthy of his friendship. Verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Your cross is going into the burdens. The trials and tribulations that you're going to experience while being in this truth. It's, good. it's not going to be easy. Remember, yeah, I wish I had to carry that cross. That was literal and spiritual at the same time, right? Um, he had to carry his cross up. And you know what? He had to do it himself, man. <laughs> Nobody's going to come to Nobody is coming to help you. You have to do that on your own. And every brother and sister has their own cross to bear. That's what they have to deal with. All right, that's what they have to deal with. So nobody's coming to help you. This is real shit. You got to rely on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And if you can't carry that cross, you're going to fall out. And that's on you. That's not on anybody else. That's on you. And falleth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life, or findeth his life, shall lose it. That's right. So you, you going back into the world and pursuing a career in, in, in singing or rapping or whatever it is, you're going to lose your life. You're going to lose your life. 
And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. That's right. You're going to lose your life in this truth. And guess what? You're going to find your life. You're going to get the kingdom. Hebrews the 8th chapter. You're going to get new bodies. You're going to get the laws written in your inward parts. You're going to inherit all things under Yahweh Shai. So you're going to find your life really when you lose your life in this truth. That's it. That's it. So anyways, I hope this was uh, edifying. Until next time, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Bahashem Rakahakodash, and the belongings to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Kwame Asha Allah Baba Bal Shalom.